Hey everyone, this is James from Rowing Books. I'm really excited for this new video as I will be sharing with you my complete Tolkien collection from the bookcase right behind me. You may have seen my previous Tolkien collection video from around a year or two ago, but since then there have been a couple of new additions to the collection. And for this video I decided to include books that are in my collection that deal specifically about Tolkien, not just by the author himself. Especially books that deal with Tolkien's life or an aspect of his works or an analysis, a scholarly book, any kind of book, whatever it may be, all about Tolkien. Admittedly, it's going to be a long video, so strap in. Okay, so first of all, this is the new bookcase I have been working on for a couple of months now. It's still being filled up with my other books in, in my collection, general books, history books, other fantasy uh, books. But this, the central column, the central uh, bookcase, is primarily Tolkien. Admittedly, there is some order and purpose to the way the books have been placed. However, I still need to figure out the correct placement of one or two books. Okay, so let's start with the top shelf right here. So, the first book I will show you is Ring of Words, Tolkien and the Oxford English Dictionary. Uh, admittedly, I have yet to uh, read this book, but I picked it up as I thought it would be an interesting aspect from a little-known period in, in Tolkien's life. We hear about Tolkien, about these great stories that he has written. Uh, however, there is also important academic work, which was ultimately his, his, his main job in life. So this is one of the books I, I really would like to uh, pick up and, and read one day. Next up, The Inklings, C.S. Lewis, J.R.R. Tolkien, Charles Williams and their friends by Humphrey Carpenter. Humphrey Carpenter, you may have heard his name, he is synonymous with the official uh, J.R.R. Tolkien biography. Uh, he actually wrote a, a, another book about, about Tolkien, specifically about the literary group who met whilst they were uh, teaching and living in, in Oxford who met famously at the Eagle and Child pub to discuss their works, and this is the story about that literary group. I, I loved this book. I, I think it, it, it evokes that period between the 1930s, 40s very, very well. It's, it's brilliantly written and it's very inspirational, especially when it comes to, to writing and the idea of meeting with other like-minded people to discuss your work and to, to criticize and to offer suggestions to other people's writings. And the fact that you have three great literary figures, especially Lewis and, and Tolkien and their friendship, it really makes this this book a, a worthwhile read, so I would suggest anyone who is even remotely interested in, in Tolkien or even uh, C.S. Lewis or both uh, to pick this book up and, and read. Alright, next up is Tolkien and the Great War, The Threshold of Middle-earth by John Cart. Once again, this book is a, an essential read. It looks into the early life of Tolkien as a, as a student and leads eventually towards his participation in uh, the First World War. And it provides a really personal account. In fact, Gart had access to uh, family letters, um, papers, you know, so he had full access to, to write a, a very uh, intriguing aspect in, in, in Tolkien's life and as the uh, subheading suggests it offers a glimpse into the beginnings, the very early fragments that would eventually become the Silmarillion and then Middle-earth. J.R.R. Tolkien, A Secret Vice, by, edited by Dimitra Fimi and Andrew Higgins. Uh, this is actually a recent purchase. I had considered getting this when it was first released in, in hardback, but this is actually the uh, paperback uh, edition of A Secret Vice. The story behind this is that in the 1920s or 30s, uh, Tolkien had written a paper for, for university in which he dealt with um, his uh, secret vice or, or hobby of uh, creating invented languages. Um, and this goes into the history and the development of that particular paper which was presented at the uh, university in, in one of the colleges in Oxford, if I'm not mistaken, and analyzes very, very intricately how Tolkien wrote the, and his approach to writing this paper about his invented languages. And there's a lot of good insight. Um, I have yet to read this book, but I have read about this book that has very good insight into 
uh, Tolkien's process and, and some really interesting details about the invented languages, um, not just Quenya and Sindar in those Elvish languages, but even earlier invented languages uh, which Tolkien had crafted during his youth. The letters of J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, once again edited by Humphrey Carpenter, uh, with the assistance of Christopher Tolkien, you can't go wrong with this. Uh, this is, uh, I would say, one of the crucial, the essential uh, books you would need if you really want to study Tolkien seriously. It provides a wealth, hundreds of, of letters by Tolkien, uh, received uh, by Tolkien as well, written from, from other individuals in some way or another connected with his life, um, and they provide invaluable insight into his writing process as he was writing Lord of the Rings, the Silmarillion. It covers a wide range of sub subjects, not just from his fictional works, but also in, in other personal uh, aspects of, of his life. So yeah, a, a truly indispensable book for anyone wanting to learn more about Tolkien and his life in general. Okay, next up is The Road to Middle-earth by Tom Shippey. Uh, once again, this is a, an academic book. It analyzes the, uh, the development of how Tolkien came to write, specifically uh, The Silmarillion and Unfinished Tales, but primarily uh, The Lord of the Rings. It looks at uh, The Lord of the Rings from a linguistic point of view and analyzes uh, interesting, inspirational and influential uh, aspects which ultimately affected Tolkien to write uh, his major work, so to speak. The Monsters and the Critics and other essays by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, this basically contains seven uh, important uh, lectures delivered, written and delivered by, by Tolkien uh, during his life uh, on a variety of subjects. Um, I will have a look at the contents to make sure I get these right. So primarily it's about um, Beowulf, the monsters and the critics, so in which Tolkien discusses um, you know, many different aspects uh, of the famous uh, epic old English poem Beowulf, which Tolkien was pretty much in, in love with as a, as a literary work and was very inspirational and influential in, in the writing of his stories. Another essay on translating Beowulf uh, from Old English to, to Modern English. There's a, a, another essay on Sir Gawain and the Green Knight on fairy stories in which Tolkien analyzes the importance of, of fairy stories throughout history and the way they, they, they changed. Another essay on English and Welsh, A Secret Vice, which was uh, that essay on the uh, invented languages that he used to, used to craft. Uh, and there's a valedictory address as well included uh, in this book. Again, it's another academic book in, in nature. I've read a couple of essays, uh, but I've always I never managed to, to finish it right through the end. Hopefully one day that will happen. Uh, I find Tolkien's style of writing, I, I have a, an almost love-hate relationship with, with Tolkien's writing when it comes to his academic work. Uh, he, he's very eloquent and uh, the, the way he writes is, is very sophisticated, but at the same time it feels um, very difficult, very tough to, to, to really understand his words and the way he's, uh, he's constructing a sentence, which sometimes makes it quite laborious to, to read through his, his academic work. But, uh, as I said, the, the man was a, had a brilliant mind. Uh, you can get that glimpse from just from you know, reading what, what he wrote. Uh, from an academic point of view and uh, yeah to any serious Tolkien scholar uh, or, or reader this is another book to go on on your list. Next up is Finn and Hengest by uh, Alan Bliss. Uh, this relates particularly once again to, to Beowulf. Um, so in the poem Beowulf, for anyone who's, who's not aware, uh, there is the what is known as the Finnsberg fragment, which was a, a piece of manuscript found uh, together with, with the poem of uh, Beowulf. Uh, and for many years, in fact, you can find many modern editions of Beowulf with this uh, Finnsberg fragment included. Uh, which is not necessarily part of the story, it has nothing to do with it, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a literally a fragment of another story. However, the reason why it seems to be linked with, with Beowulf, uh, besides uh, its manuscript being found with, the manus with Beowulf's manuscript, uh, there's also an episode in the story of uh, Beowulf itself, uh, like kind of flashback or, or, or where characters um, reveal a particular history of a, of a character, in this case Finn, which is the same character who appears probably in the fragment itself. 
and Tolkien basically tries to, in this book, tries to reconcile the two and he tries to find connections between the fragment and the episode in Beowulf and to see whether they are ultimately uh, one and the same story or uh, and, and characters. So once again very very heavy academically but a really great insight into something which is not perhaps well known about Tolkien and the way, you know, his, his love of old English and the literature of that time. Um, and just to see, you know, the way he, he analyzes things and the way he, he, he writes about them uh, is a really intriguing part of, of his life, which is not well known, as well known as, as his uh, fantasy stories, ultimately. Next up. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight by Tolkien. This has been edited by Christopher Tolkien. I love this book. Basically, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is a 14th century uh, medieval poem which Tolkien translated uh, into modern uh, English and it deals with Gawain who is a knight of King Arthur's uh, court uh, who goes on a quest basically and obviously there's also a Green Knight obviously as the title implies involved in the story. Together in this book there's also uh, Pearl and Sir Orfeo which are two separate uh, also medieval literary works. They are in, in poem form and uh, Tolkien also translated that which is why they were included as one single book, uh, one single volume uh, entitled primarily Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Next up we have this 1997 paperback issue of Tolkien's Tales from the Perilous Realm. So this is a collection of four individual works which were published separately. They include The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, that uh, collection of uh, poems which are related to The Lord of the Rings. Uh, there's Leaf by Nigel which is Tolkien's only known uh, allegorical short story. Uh, another short story, Smith of Wooton Major, which involves uh, cake baking and, and fairies. Uh, and Farmer Giles of Ham, about this uh, whimsical uh, farmer who goes off on an adventure and meets giants and, and dragons. And they're collected in this neat uh, little volume. The only book missing from this is Roverandum, but in later editions, which we will see in, in, in my collection soon, uh, Roverandum was also included as part of the uh, Tales of the Perilous Realm, but in this particular edition it was omitted uh, and it was released in, in a, a separate volume, Roverandum, uh, also in this uh, black paperback uh, edition from 1999, I believe, which unfortunately I did not manage to get a copy and I know I've been saying this many times in, in different videos, especially in collection videos, I missed that volume, that single volume Roverandum uh, paperback edition, but I believe uh, there may be a couple floating around uh, for sale on the internet, so who knows, maybe one day. Next up, my trusted, well-thumbed copy of The Hobbit. This is from 1999 paperback uh, edition, I believe. You know, The Hobbit, it's uh, Tolkien's classic. Um, I keep going back to this uh, over and over every year to, to reread and I use the paperback edition because you know it's easy easy to 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 flick through the pages uh, you know it makes it for a very comfortable and and enjoyable read Next up is The Fellowship of the Ring, once again in the same uh, format edition from 1999 um, I keep mentioning the um, the tag on on the front cover uh, I'm afraid of tearing it off, which should, it will probably leave a mark. Again, well thumbed as well, as you can see. I, I like reading Lord of the Rings as separate volumes rather than one single volume because, once again, practicality, handling of the book, flicking through the pages, it just makes it so much easier. Next up, we're jumping on to The Return of the King, uh, same edition as The Fellowship of the Ring, however, no The Two Towers, unfortunately. Interesting story behind that uh, is that for some reason, I uh, I either could years back when I when I bought these books somehow I couldn't find the two towers from the same edition and you know it has bugged me ever since unfortunately but uh, you know I got got used to having just the first and third volume in this particular edition um, but don't worry the two towers exist in my collection. Next up, unfinished tales. I just love the the simple design and the Tolkien's uh, illustration here. Um, you know, a 
I love this very thick bulky volume on Finnish tales. It's, I always feel like it's a kind of companion book uh, to the Silmarillion. Um, you know, and I have this kind of daydreaming wish that once they, the publishers might decide to actually combine both on Finnish tales and the Silmarillion as one single copy as I believe they should be ultimately. But, you know, that's a matter for opinion and cost for the publishers. So that's the only thing probably preventing them from ever doing this. But. And here we have the Silmarillion. Once again, well thumbed uh, with the crease along the spine. Unfortunately, this does have a cracked spine due to repeated readings. Um, but once again, I still keep returning back to this particular copy. And, you know, it's the first Tolkien book I ever bought when I was 16, so, you know, quite a while back. Um, and I remember sitting down in a library to read this from front to back. I didn't understand the majority of the story, but I still wanted to get through this. But perhaps not the best choice to start reading Tolkien from the Silmarillion. But hey, now we're here today, so, you know, turned out to be fine. As already mentioned, Humphrey Carpenter's uh, biography of J.R.R. Tolkien. There are a few things about it which are a bit out of date um, nowadays, however, it still stands uh, the test of time and it is the um, only official authorized uh, biography by Tolkien, which details his, his earliest beginnings since he was born right until his uh, passing in 1973. And here we have the copy of the Two Towers. So as you can see, a completely different edition from the Fellowship of the Ring and the Return of the King. This was, I believe, uh, I had won some kind of uh, prize and you know, I could go to a bookshop and pick up uh, a book that, that I wanted. And I remember back then, uh, the Two Towers film had just been released, so I was you know, completely in that uh, headspace. And as soon as I saw this copy, without even considering Fellowship of the Ring, I just picked this up and actually started to read this, but then stopped in the first few chapters, not wanting to uh, spoil any, any, any parts of the, the, the story which had yet to be released in The Return of the King. And in hindsight, it was a very good decision that I did not pursue the reading further. The Legend of Sigurd and Gudrun, edited by Christopher Tolkien. This is the 2009 uh, paperback edition. Uh, so basically this uh, is a poetic rendering of the Lay of the Volsungs and also included is the Lay of Gudrun. So this deals with uh, these Nordic, these Norse heroes from history which Tolkien was very much uh, influenced by uh, and well read. Uh, and Tolkien writes his own versions of these heroic tales. So next up is the story of Kullervo. So Kullervo was a character from the uh, Finnish uh, epic saga, the Kalevala. And uh, this is Tolkien's first attempt at writing uh, legends of his own, the, uh, the way he, he described it. Uh, and in fact, the character of Kullervo was almost the, the the predecessor of his more famous character uh, Turin Torambar in The Children of Hurin. The Lay of Otro and the Tron, uh, once again edited by Verilin Flieger. So this is a, uh, a collection of three works. Uh, one major work, which is a 500 uh, verse poem dealing with the Lord and the Lady, hence Atro and the Throne, in the Bretonic language of Brittany, which is a, uh, a, a region in France, in the uh, northwestern part of France. And there was this uh, literary style known as a, a Breton lay, which was formulated in this uh, um, a short, a short narrative in poetic form, and Tolkien attempts to write that in this uh, book. Once again, I think Tolkien's prowess in, in poetry poetry is, is very much under, understated. I just love the, the lay of Otro and the Tron, Tolkien's poetic style, the way he writes, the story he conjures up with, with uh, you know, this knight and his lady and he goes on a quest, you know, very, very Celtic, very, very um, Bretonic, so to speak. Uh, and included are also two shorter works um, which are somehow related to, the, um, to this Celtic mythology. So, next up we have um, paperback versions for the Children of Húrin. Beren and Luthien, 
and the fall of Gondolin. So these are um, what has been termed as the three great tales of Middle-earth. Next up is The Fall of Arthur, edited by Christopher Tolkien. Now, to me, I've said this many times, I consider this to be my favorite and the best uh, Tolkien non-Middle-earth related book. In essence, it's unfortunately an unfinished poem, uh, running to about a thousand verses, um, which deal with uh, King Arthur as he makes his way across Europe and hears that his uh, nephew Mordred has taken over the throne in Britain, so he has to rush back to Britain to reclaim his throne. It's written in alliterative meter, so the Old English style which was used in Beowulf, uh, and Tolkien once again demonstrates his mastery of of poetry and especially the alliterative meter, uh, the way he describes the, the, the atmosphere, the characters, emotions, the events as they occur, uh, rushing to, to, to a great climax. I'm in love with this book, basically, uh, and even Christopher Tolkien's masterful commentary, analysis, notes, uh, the essays he provides, and you know, even insight into Tolkien's, his father's idea of linking his story of, of King Arthur to the Silmarillion. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting essay, one of the essays provided by Tolkien in this book, so I just love this. And next up we have a Tree and Leaf, including the poem Mythopia and the homecoming of Beornot. Next up is this extremely tiny and thin book, as you can see. Uh, this is Leaf by Nigel. Uh, it's a standalone uh, edition of the story. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's a very, very short story, just under 60 pages. Yeah, and I, I just loved this release, so I, I had to get it for my collection. Yeah, lovely, lovely little book. So, next up, I uh, am proud to say I'm the owner of a first edition of Tolkien's Smith of Wootal Major, which was released in 1967. The illustrations are by Pauline Baines. It's a fairly, again, it's a fairly small book, um, but, you know, given that it's a first edition, um, I'm very proud to, to own, own this. This is no surprise, you may have seen a previous video in which I exhibited my first edition of the Silmarillion. Once again, as I said in the previous video, the, uh, the plastic transparent wrapping was not originally part of the, of the book itself, but it's, it's, it's there just to add uh, some extra protection, especially to the dust jacket. So yeah, first edition of the Silmarillion. Um, they're quite uh, common, I believe there were around 300,000, 320,000 copies made back then, so in 1977. It's a first edition, it's a Tolkien, and it's the Silmarillion, so you can't go wrong there. And here we have another first edition, The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, once again it's a standalone version. This was published in 1962, uh, once again we have the transparent uh, plastic around the dust jacket, uh, and the illustrations were done by Pauline Baines, who was Tolkien's favourite illustrator, uh, in a way, and uh, you know, her, her, her artwork in this book especially really, really shines through. I won't forget uh, Bilbo's last song, once again, illustrations by uh, Pauline Baines. This is a hardback edition. It's a very short book, it's a, it's, a, it's a single poem ultimately. As far as I know, it was almost going to be included uh, towards the end of the Lord of the Rings, because the idea behind this book is that it's uh, when he's approaching the Grey Havens with the other hobbits, and he's looking back on his adventures and the adventures of, of Frodo and Sam and the other hobbits. So it's a, it's a short little poem with some beautiful illustrations by, by Baines and it recounts, you know, as I said, the story of the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings as they go towards uh, the Grey Havens for the final journey towards the West. And here we have an infamous copy uh, in my collection of The Hobbit. Yes, that looks terrible. This is a pocket edition by Houghton Mifflin of The Hobbit. In fact, its, it's text, uh, the font size is, is very small, but it, it's beautiful. Look at these um, gold-edged uh, pages. It was marked as, as, as leather, but now I, I, I realize it, it's for leather, so it's, it's, not, it's not real. And, you know, without any, any particular uh, disturbances to the book, it just, you know, year after year started to to crack and crumble and become in this sort of flaky mess, unfortunately, and it keeps on, you know, uh, disintegrating bit by bit. So, 
Yeah, it's unfortunate because I, I really, I really loved this uh, this book the way the way it was presented. But yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, it's not looking good. You know, it, it uh, time hasn't been kind to this book. But yeah, it still sits uh, in my collection as as a, as, a, as a reminder of 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 the greatness it once was uh, aesthetically, at least. Okay, so that was just the first shelf. I hope you're you're still there. Uh, we're now moving on to the second shelf, which is all about uh, deluxe editions. And a couple of deluxe editions have gone into the the third shelf due to space limitations. So, oh, first of all, we have the uh, J.R.R. Tolkien collection, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from 2004. So this was a box set uh, which included deluxe editions of The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, The Silmarillion and The Children of Hurin. If I remember correctly, there was also another box set very similar to this, but also included the deluxe edition of Tales from the Perilous Realm. Uh, but this is uh, a four volume set, um, it's very heavy, it's absolutely brilliant, uh, I love, uh, love this collection. You can still find the books uh, separately, uh, the individual volumes, uh, but I believe it's very difficult to find this uh, four volume set or even the five volume set with uh, Tales from the Pedersen's Realm included. But you know, you might strike it lucky, you, you never know. Next up, the deluxe edition of uh, Beren and Luthien, uh, still in its uh, shrink wrap. I really need to uh, make sure I take these off. You know, sometimes I, I do uh, doubt whether I should, you know, remove the, the covering, but I've, I've read that, you know, by time, with the accumulation of condensation and, and, and all the, the, the particles, it might actually damage the book. So, you know, best to, to remove the, the shrink wrap. And ultimately, you know, uh, that's the reason why they're part of the collection, so they can be enjoyed rather than just you know, just sitting there gathering dust uh, in, in its shrink wrap. So, Beren and Luthien Deluxe Edition. Uh, followed by The Fall of Gondolin Deluxe Edition and The Unfinished Tales uh, Deluxe Edition. Uh, this was from, I can't remember the date exactly, but it was, you know, a couple of years back. So it, it's the same book as was released uh, in 2021, together with the Silmarillion, um, with Ted Nesmith's uh, illustrations. But this goes more, is part more of the style as the J.R.R. Tolkien collection from 2004. So, yes, this is the deluxe edition of Unfinished Tales. The nature of Middle-earth in this beautiful, beautiful uh, purple color with the uh, tree motif by made by Tolkien um, yeah and just stunning we have the recent release of um, Robert Foster's the complete guide to Middle Earth with this slipcase uh, illustration by Ted Nesmith the fall of Numenor in deluxe edition by Brian Sibley which was released very very recently and it's still in its shrink wrap as I would like to make an unboxing video a very late unboxing video admittedly uh, of this of this book and here we have the deluxe edition of the legend of Sigurd and the Gudrun which was released I believe in 2007 and the deluxe edition of Beowulf, a translation and commentary. So this is uh, Tolkien's work, which was released a couple of years back, uh, and is a prose translation in modern English by Tolkien of the Old English uh, poem Beowulf. Uh, and here we have the story of Kullervo as a deluxe uh, edition. And this is the Letters from Father Christmas Deluxe Edition. Uh, once again, the stunning, stunning red, red color with the uh, Father Christmas stamp here. And yes, I, I think this is one of my favorite uh, Deluxe Editions, the way it's presented. And here we have the 2021 uh, Deluxe Illustrated Edition of the Silmarillion. In this, as I keep mentioning, this shocking bright orange color with Nesmith's stunning uh, illustration on the uh, slipcase. And to accompany that, we have the uh, 2021 Deluxe Illustrated Edition of Unfinished Tales, once again with Ted Nesmith's uh, illustration on the slipcase as well. The Tales from the Perilous Realm, the Deluxe Edition. This was purchased as a separate uh, volume, so it was not part of that uh, four-volume collection, the uh, J.R.R. Tolkien collection. But as I said before, uh, you may find a five-volume set of all these books, and this included as well as part of the, the set. Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, with including Pearl and Sir Orfeo by Tolkien, the Deluxe Edition. 
And the last uh, deluxe edition is the Fall of Arthur. No more said. We have the uh, recently uh, released slipcase deluxe edition of The Lord of the Rings with illustrations by Tolkien himself. And to complement that, we also have the Silmarillion uh, deluxe uh, edition with Tolkien's illustrations as well. And if you're interested in knowing more and seeing more about these books, I will put links to the video unboxing and reviews to these individual books in the description down below, so you can have a closer look at them uh, in more detail. So this is the hardback edition of uh, the standard hardback edition of the Silmarillion from 2021. The standard hardback edition from 2020 of Unfinished Tales with illustrations by John Howe, Alan Lee and Ted Nesmith. The standard hardback edition of The Fall of Numenor with illustrations by Alan Lee. My first first edition, so to speak, uh, of a Tolkien book. So this was purchased back in 2007 when uh, The Children of Huron was first released. Uh, it was, you know, a major release uh, after many years of a Tolkien book. So having the Children of Hurin as a standalone book, as a standalone story, uh, with illustrations by Alan Lee, edited by Christopher Tolkien in hardback format, a first edition, you know, it was a, it was a must. So it, perhaps this was the first book which started my 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 love for for collecting Tolkien and and beautiful books in general. Continuing the trend with the great tales of Middle Earth, we have Beren and Luthien, the standard hardback edition released in 2017, with illustrations by Alan Lee. And then we have The Fall of Gondolin, published in 2019, uh, once again illustrations by Alan Lee, with the standard hardback edition. And we also have The Fall of Gondolin, published in 2019, um, you know, exact same book. Now, a lot of people seem to ask, uh, why do you have two copies of the, of the same book uh, and same edition? The story is that I first purchased this book when it was first released, but then I realized that there's uh, another version which was, which was signed by the illustrator and Lee. And I basically uh, couldn't let go of this original book, so I had to keep this in my collection and add this to my collection with, the, uh, with Alan Lee's signature. So that is the mystery why I keep two copies of The Fall of Gondor. And pretty much because I love this book and can't get enough of it. Next up we have a 2008 copy of The Tales from the Perilous Realm. This is a hardback edition. So as I said from the paperback version, uh, this includes uh, Farmer Giles of Ham, uh, The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, Smith of Wooton Major, Leave by Nigel, and for the first time they included also Roverandom, the short story Roverandom. And the illustrations are by Alan Lee. Here we have the uh, hardback edition, standard edition of The Nature of Middle-earth, edited by Carl F. Hostetter, and the standard hardback edition of Beowulf, a translation and commentary. The Fall of Arthur, standard hardback edition. The Legend of Sigurd and Gudrun, standard hardback edition. The Story of Kulervo, standard hardback edition. And The Lay of Otro and the Tron, standard hardback edition. Moving on to the next shelf now, perhaps the most prized of Tolkien books in my collection uh, is this super deluxe limited edition signed by Christopher Tolkien and Alan Lee and limited to 500 uh, copies is the Children of Huron. It's presented in this beautiful clamshell casing with the book itself inside. Next up, the 2021 standard hardback edition of The Lord of the Rings, illustrated by Tolkien, with the popular or infamous um, red edged pages and the uh, white uh, ring inscription, and the recently released standard hardback edition of the Silmarillion, once again with Tolkien's own illustrations. That green. Now, these four books coming up are hardback editions with uh, Tolkien's illustration on uh, the respective dust jacket from 2006. So we have The Silmarillion, The Unfinished Tales, The Hobbit, The Fellowship of the Ring, with the uh, reproduction of the original uh, cover from 1954, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. And this, as you can see, was part of the 50th anniversary uh, celebration, this particular edition, from the release of that book. 
Next up, we have the um, Alan Lee illustrated box set, which includes The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings as a three volume set. This is a stunning, stunning box set, which I highly recommend. Even if you're uh, looking for a, a copy to read or to collect, this should be your first starting point, in my opinion. A paperback version of Beowulf, a translation and commentary. Um, I have to say the, the, the size of the book is, is quite large and it doesn't really match with uh, other books in, in the collection, but I believe there might be another edition, paperback edition of this, which is on a slightly smaller scale and fits well next to these. Next up is this uh, pocket version by Houghton Mifflin um, of The Lord of the Rings in this flexible cover, which I absolutely love. Uh, even the page quality and the reading size, the font size, uh, I think it's, you know, it's a very handy volume and it's a handy volume and it makes it easy actually to read. I think this is probably the only single volume edition which is really accessible to, to read, uh, practically at least. A facsimile of the first edition of The Hobbit, which reproduces the text as it was released and it comes in this nice uh, slipcase as well. The Tolkien Treasury, which brings together these uh, four volumes, the short stories and short works by, by Tolkien in a hardback pocket-sized version, with artwork by Pauline Baines. So this all includes Roverandom, Smith of Wootan Major, Adventures of Tom Bombadil and Farmer Giles of Han. Uh, next up we have a book uh, about Tolkien, which is Tolkien's Gedling by Andrew H. Morton and John Hayes. So this is a, a, about a very specific time in, in Tolkien's life when Tolkien went to visit his aunt Jane and that's where he wrote uh, The Voyage of Erendil, the Evening Star, which would later on uh, go on to spark and influence his, his later mythology. Uh, we have Green Suns and Fairy Essays on J.R.R. Tolkien by Verilyn Flieger. Arda Reconstructed, the creation of the published Silmarillion by Douglas Charles Kane. Tolkien on Fairy Stories by Veridin Flieger in this uh, hardback edition, uh, which expands the essay that Tolkien wrote on fairy stories with plenty of commentaries and notes and analysis of the creation of the essay itself. Tolkien, Race and Cultural History from Fairies to Hobbits by Dimitra Fimi and J.R.R. Tolkien, Author of the Century by Tom Shippey. The Complete Tolkien Companion by J.E.A. Tyler. So this is like an encyclopedia which lists alphabetically all the character names, all the places, uh, locations, races, creatures that are to be found in Tolkien's works, Middle Earth related uh, works. And you have a handy uh, description on, on each of these uh, characters and, and places. Uh, which is very similar to Robert Foster's guide to, to Middle Earth. They serve the same purpose ultimately. Uh, but I've heard a lot of people say uh, Foster's guide to Middle Earth is more comprehensive and more in detail and more accurate than Tyler's companion book. But to be fair, I found this very useful as well in, in researching uh, Tolkien. So, you know, a handy volume to have. The History of the Hobbits, in part one and part two by John D. Ratliff. So this uh, uh, basically goes through the development of the Hobbit, the way um, Tolkien progressively wrote and uh, how the story evolved into its uh, finished form. This is also, I believe, available, uh, will be available at least in a, a single deluxe edition, a single volume edition uh, in March. So, you know, looking forward to that as well. The Lord of the Rings, A Reader's Companion by Wayne G. Hammond and Christina Skull. Uh, this is an extensively detailed uh, look and analysis into the entire story of the Lord of the Rings. You know, it goes into the evolution of characters' names and, and how certain passages and moments in the story evolved from initial drafts to the finished form. And now we have uh, the history of Middle-earth in paperback format, starting with The Book of Lost Tales, part 1, The Book of Lost Tales, part 2, The Lays of Beleriand, The Shaping of Middle-earth, The Lost Road and Other Writings, The Return of the Shadow, The Treason of Isengard, The War of the Ring, Sauron Defeated, Morgoth's Ring, The War of the Jewels, The Peoples of Middle-earth, and the final volume, The History of Middle-earth Index. So, The History of Middle-earth is a 
unprecedented academic piece of work written by Christopher Tolkien who charts the entire creation of Tolkien's mythology from the Silmarillion till the Lord of the Rings. The amount, the hundreds and thousands of manuscripts, paper, sheets written by, by his father, you know, charting the evolution, the maps, the, the characters, it's really an unprecedented work. Yes, since the release of the final volume, The Peoples of Middle-earth, in the 90s, there have been uh, books which have updated certain things, such as the nature of Middle-earth, but it is still a very essential and worthwhile and not easy to, to read series. But, once again, it's an indispensable over-the-shoulder look, the way it's marketed, uh, into Tolkien's uh, writing style and evolution, uh, creation and evolution of his mythology. And we arrive to the last shelf in this uh, bookcase. Starting off with J.R.R. Tolkien, artist and illustrator by Wayne G. Hammond and Christina Skull. So this contains over 200 paintings, drawings and sketches, including many from The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. The Letters from Father Christmas by Bailey Tolkien. This is the hardback uh, centenary edition. Uh, which was released back in 2020 uh, to celebrate 100 years since you know the first letters were being sent by Tolkien, written and sent by Tolkien uh, to his children in 1920. The Road Goes Ever On by J.R.R. Tolkien and music by Donald Swan, which includes also a free CD uh, which can be found at the back here. So what is The Road Goes Ever On? Uh, it includes some of the finest examples we have of Tolkien's uh, Tangward and the Elvish invented language of uh, Quenya. This is basically a songbook developed by Donald Swan who gave music to several characters from Tolkien's creations uh, and Tolkien complemented this book by including a few extracts from his um, invented language of Quenya. Next up we have the three art books uh, and those are the art of the Hobbit, the art of the Lord of the Rings, and pictures by J.R.R. Tolkien. All these three together with the artist and illustrator book, they reproduce many um, of the same uh, paintings and sketches across all books, so you will find uh, duplicates in, in all four books. Uh, however, obviously, you know, as part of the marketing strategy, they always include a number of illustrations and paintings and sketches and drawings which are unique to each respective book. We have the maps of Tolkien's Middle Earth, which was featured in my last video. As people have directed attention to this, and I thank you for that. This, unfortunately, is no longer in print. However, you can find several um, second-hand versions um, available on, on the internet if you're interested in getting a copy of this book. Tolkien, maker of Middle Earth. So you may have seen uh, my video uh, unboxing and reviewing this book. So this was created in conjunction with an exhibition uh, of the same name, which was held in Oxford a couple of years ago. Uh, and this, which is uh, curated by Catherine McElwain, uh, is a really in-depth book, which looks into the, the life of Tolkien and reproduces many images and and sketches and uh, um, first drafts and manuscripts and photographs from Tolkien's life and provides some really insightful commentary on Tolkien in general, his stories and uh, also his life as well. Next up we have Mr. Bliss, which is a short story written by Tolkien. Um, this is a facsimile edition and it's also illustrated by Tolkien himself. And if we pull out this book, we find the uh, reproduction, uh, facsimile reproduction of the original story. Um, and this is a, a neat little volume because it includes you know, the actual page with Tolkien's writing and illustration and we have a transcribed version for, for better legibility for those who, who require it. This is the 2004 hardback edition of Letters from Father Christmas. This is actually my favorite edition of this particular book. It's just uh, beautiful with the with the gold motif and the illustration it even smells like Christmas come on a little biography by J.R.R. Tolkien um, produced by little people big dreams the Atlas of Middle Earth by Karen Wynne Fonstad uh, hopefully I will be releasing a video on this very soon a standard hardback edition of Robert Foster's complete guide to Middle Earth 
the annotated hobbit by douglas a anderson the jrr tolkien companion and guide box set which includes a chronology volume and a reader's guide volume uh, this is by christina skull and wayne g hammond next up we have hardback massive hardback editions of the history of middle earth volumes condensed into three massive volumes so we have the history of middle earth part one which includes the first five volumes from the series the history of middle earth part two which includes the next four volumes in the history of middle earth series and the history of middle earth part three which includes the final three volumes in the series and the final three books in my collection deal with tolkien's works in fact the first one is roots and branches Selected Papers on Tolkien by Tom Shippey. I found this extremely insightful, extremely useful, you know, and it deals with several subjects, several themes and motifs in Tolkien's writings. We have A Question of Time by Verilyn Flieger, J.R.R. Tolkien's Road to Fairy, and A Gateway to Sindarin by David Salo. So this is basically a grammar book of the Elvish language and it's, you know, it's quite scholarly in its scope, but I found it very useful for reference purposes as well, so... And we've reached the end of my J.R.R. Tolkien collection. So those were all of my books from the first to the last uh, pertaining to Tolkien. I envision there will be future additions to, to the collection, especially coming this March. There is the uh, Battle of Maldon, which will be released, and the single volume deluxe edition of The History of the Hobbit by John D. Ratcliffe. If you have any questions, please do submit them in the comments below. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers!